Welcome back, everybody. Let's use our parts of speech for some reading skills. So this is an extract from Next Door, which is a short story studied by some FAL students. She and Paul screamed at the same time. So do a little test now. We've done a whole lot of teaching. What part of speech is she? We talked about the difficulties of pronouns in English that deal with gender. So let's assume this is a woman. What part of speech is Paul? Now this is one of the nouns that we didn't talk about. So it's a noun. What kind of noun? It's a proper noun, spelt with a capital letter. What part of speech is screamed? So say to yourself, what's it telling me? It's telling me the tense. So it's the finite verb in the past tense. Then we've got at. Let's get a nice bright green. What part of speech is at? That's your preposition. At the same time. Notice that that's the preposition that goes with that phrase. And then she grabbed him as he started to run. You want candy? She said wildly. Bicycle? No, thank you, said Paul shrilly. Right, so we look at shrilly. It's telling me how Paul is speaking. What does it mean if you are shrill? So I tried to show you that. It's when you get really high pitch. So Paul goes up. Why? In panic. Not this time. You haven't seen or heard a thing, she said. You know what happens to squealers. Yes, cried Paul. She dug into her purse. Purse. Right, where are we? Do we know that we're in America? So for an American... Let's get back to the blue. What we, all right, I in South Africa call a purse that little sort of thing like a wallet with a little, little clip and I put my money in it. But in the United States, a purse is a handbag. So that's dialect use of English. So she dug into her purse and brought out a perfumed mulch of face tissues, bobby pins, and cash. Now, you can't just say, I don't know. How often will I say something like, okay, what do you think mulch means? I don't know. That is a, a reflex action. So let's say you've never seen it before in your life. You work it out. We have a context. She digs into her handbag and she brings out face tissues, bobby pins, well, if you don't know what a bobby pin is, just go with pin, and cash, and they're all in a, what must it mean? A mulch, it's a, 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 a glob, a whole lot of squashed together things. Now, where do I expect you to have seen this, heard this? In gardening? So you know that when the leaves fall in autumn, they often say make a mulch of the leaves and put it around your plants to protect from frost and things. So think about the leaves, slightly soggy, slightly broken, squished together. That's a mulch, but you could work it out here. So it's this mess, this combined mess of tissues, bobby pins and cash, bobby pins. Like a hairpin? Like that, that you put into your, you know, I don't have enough, but you pin it up and then you put in the bobby pins. Right. Here, she panted, it's yours. And there's more where that came from, if you keep your mouth shut. She stuffed it into his trousers pocket. Okay. Let's have a look at this part of the sentence. What is the finite verb? Right, it's, it's keep, or I would accept keep shut. 
Who must keep the mouth shut? You. Who's she talking to? Paul. So Paul must keep his mouth shut. That is a part of a sentence. I want a different color. Let me go back to my red, which starts with a conjunction. That is a subordinating conjunction. So a round bracket. This is a subordinate clause. Do we understand it's a clause? So Marlon, Marlon, if a part of a sentence has a subject and a finite verb, it's called a clause. If it's just the subject and the finite verb and it doesn't have any other bits like if you just say, we are writing three tests on Friday, one finite verb, it's a main clause. We are writing three tests on Friday because we missed a test last week. You've got another verb and a conjunction. So a clause, please. It has a subject and a finite verb. If it's one finite verb, it's one clause. If you have two finite verbs, you've got two clauses. If you haven't got a conjunction, you need a full stop between your clauses, not a comma. Commas do not end sentences. Full stops end sentences. So you've got two clauses or you need a conjunction. Here, if. So what's she basically doing? She's giving him the face tissues, the bobby pins and the cash. What do you think is meant to be important to this boy? The cash. Doesn't matter. She can't separate the cash from the face tissues and the bobby, bobby pins. So she just gives him this whole mess. So she's basically paying him. She's paying him off. To do what? To keep his mouth shut. So we come back to a word that I didn't look at. So what is a squealer? So what is to squeal? Okay, so we've got ER at the end. So let's, let's write here. I teach, and I make that into a noun by adding ER, teacher. Um, I docked <laughs> a doctor from the idea of doctoring. So the ER ending or the OR ending, actually, or an IST ending, I play the piano. So I am a pianist. These are person nouns. Now, I said to you, you know, I'm not very happy about concrete noun, but I see it. I see people also talk about person nouns. So I don't mind as long as you understand what you're talking about. If we take something and we want to make it a person, we can add the suffixes E-R-O-R or I-S-T. We can add other things as well. Um, we can add I-A-N, like comedian, or ick, like comic. Okay, so we can, uh, thinking of that, that as a person. So we can add endings to make it into a person. So a squealer, squealers, plural. I've had a sudden thought, Marlon, Marlon, did you want me to do plurals? You get that in FAL. They give you community, and you've got to write communities, family, families. So maybe that's what you wanted. Please be as specific as possible when you send me your questions. So squealers. Squealers are people who squeal. So what is to squeal? Again, what a nice word. I told you, you don't have to use big words. Squeal, such a nice word. So pigs in English, squeal. All right, pigs in English also make a sort of oink oink sound, right? But if you hurt a pig, it goes sort of Meow! and that is to squeal. So is she actually talk look at this again. You haven't seen or heard a thing. You know what happens to squealers. Well she can't mean that he's a pig going Meow! so where do we get the explanation from? Come down here. Squealers are clearly people who do not keep their mouths shut. So, you might have heard the word, especially in American programs, a squealer is somebody who tells the truth to the police or to somebody in authority. That is to squeal. So, yes, and you know, if you're a, if you're a piglet and you've got your tail trodden on or something. I don't know how you tread on a piglet's tail. Maybe it was sitting down. But that is to squeal. But it's used as a slang term, meaning people who tell an authority. 
to get somebody else into tr trouble. Sorry, that just gave me a fright. Things are falling down. Things fall apart. Ah, COVID virus, the world we live in. Right. Okay. So come back to this. And she stuffed it, th that's the mess of the mulch, into his trousers pocket. She looked at him fiercely, then fled into the street. So let's do the finite verbs here. She looked at him fiercely, first finite verb. Looked. Where is she looking? At him. Preposition. How is she looking? Fiercely. So it's telling you how she's looking. Adverb. Why is she looking like at him like that? Because she's warning him. Don't you dare say anything. Then fled into the street. There's a second word. And please fled. A nice, short, powerful word. Okay, so what is to flee? The um, infinitive is to flee. And it means to run away. So she fled into the street. Paul ran back into his apartment. Now, finite verb. He ran which direction? Back, where? Into his apartment. So either you're going to call that an adverb or you're going to say ran back as a finite verb. I, I'd rather have ran back, where? Into his apartment. Preposition. What else did he do? He jumped into bed. What else did he do? He pulled the covers over his head. What else did he do? He cried. Why? What had he done? He had helped to kill a man. Now, I said I wasn't going to do the infinitive. Please, to kill is an infinitive. It is not a finite verb. The finite verb has a tense. To kill doesn't have a tense. If you say, I plan to kill the fly. Tense, present tense. The to kill is not telling you present tense. Plan is telling you present tense. I planned to kill the fly. Tense. Past tense. To kill is not telling you a tense. That's the infinitive. Planned is telling you the tense. So your finite verb, Marlon Marlon, is giving you the tense. The to kill is an infinitive. It's a verb, but it's a non-finite verb. It's an infinitive. All right. So if we have a look at what we've got so far, there's another United States use of a word. Can you find it earlier on in the passage? Candy. Candy tells you, when I said, do we know we're in America? It occurred to me afterwards, yes, we know from, even if you don't know from the purse, we should know from candy. So, what we've just done here is we've used parts of speech. So the first part of the lesson on parts of speech to try to help us get to grips with reading. And reading skills are really important. So I think your question, Marlon Marlon, was a really good one for this evening. So I want to thank you and thank Liberty for giving me the chance to deal with this in more detail. Because if, you're, if you've got some grasp of the nuts and bolts of language, the things that we put sentences together with, then we can get to reading skills. Yes, you need background as well. You need to know the candy, United States, that'll give us setting. But you are working with language to get to comprehension. And your reading skills are fundamentally important. You're going to read for the rest of your life, even if you never read a story again, if you never read a piece of literature again, 
you are going to read. You're going to be reading around your physical sciences. If you think you're going to go off to university and do a BSc and never read again, you've got a shock coming. So you've got to get your reading skills as high as you can. So I want to thank Liberty, thank Marlon Marlon for his question, which kept us going for an hour. Please join me again next week. From me, bye-bye.